Hi all, last video about domain of functions. I wanna look at two more. These two aren't a pair, they just have a little bit of mess that I wanna make sure that we talk about. So hopefully these will be fairly quick. Okay, so let's see, what are we up to? H. My pen lost it. And Okay, so if H of X is equal to, where is it, X squared, over the square root of 5 minus x, uh, and we want to find the domain. Okay, so right now, again, we really only have two problems that we will have to watch out for. We'll be meeting new problems along the way, but right now we just need to worry about dividing by 0, taking the square root of negative numbers. So we want to think about if we have a division to make us worry and if we have an even root to make us worry. And the answer to both of those questions is yes. So uh, we can look at either one first. Let's say we look at only the square root first. If we're only worrying about the square root, we would have to say that five minus x has to be greater than or equal to zero or I won't be able to take the square root of this thing which means, let's just add x to both sides, five is greater than or equal to x, or if you wanna flip flop direction there, x is less than or equal to five would be equivalent statement. Okay, so this is great if we're only worried about taking the square root of five minus x, but we aren't only worried about that. We're worried about first taking that square root and then dividing x squared by whatever we get. So I am not worried about squaring anything at all, but I am worried about performing this division. If I wanna make sure that the division is gonna work, I also need to be sure that the square root of five minus x, the stuff on the bottom, is not equal to zero, which maybe we can just see by inspection. What happens there is that x can't be five. The only way that you're going to get the square root of something to be zero is if that something is zero. So we wanna make sure five minus x is not zero, which means x does not equal five. So we were almost there just looking at the square root, but we actually have to go back over here and say, all right, I changed my mind. I don't want x to equal five. And that will deal with both problems. So the set of all x such that x is strictly less than five is great here. So there's not really just a step by step, you do it in this order and the answer pops out. It's all about looking at the formula and thinking about the values that can get you in trouble. Anything bigger than five can get me in trouble because I'll get a square root of a negative number. Five exactly will get me in trouble because I will get division by zero. So just this is my domain, or if you wanna write it in interval notation, everything from negative infinity up to five, not including five. Okay, so there's one, and I wanna do one more that has both fractions and roots in it, just to make sure that we're not mixed up i of x is equal to the square root of 3x minus 5 over x plus 4. Okay, so we once again have both radicals and fractions in the same problem. So you can worry about those two problems in whatever order you want. Maybe we'll switch it up this time. I'm going to worry about the division first. If I wanted to divide something by x plus 4, I need to be really sure that x plus 4 does not equal 0. I'm not allowed to divide by 0, which means that x is not allowed to be negative 4. I cannot use negative 4 as an input. Unfortunately, I'm not done. I'm not worried about the top of the fraction being zero. I'm not worried about whether the top of the fraction is positive or negative, but I am worried about this part of the top of the fraction being negative. So I wanna make sure that three X minus five is greater than or equal to zero. I can't take the square root of the three X plus five unless it's greater than or equal to zero. We're back to a linear inequality, so we don't have to do any fancy graphing, although it would work perfectly well if you wanna graph y equals three x minus five and then figure out when your y values are positive, that would give you the right answer. But I would say the easy way on this one is just to solve. We're gonna add five to both sides and divide by three. Since three is positive, we don't have to worry about direction. Okay, so to make the division work, we have to be sure that our x is not four. 
to make the square root work, we have to be sure that our x is greater than or equal to 5 thirds. And we want to try and simplify this statement. So it's really a combination of the two. We need both to be true, which makes this an and statement. But we should be able to do better than that. If we think about what we're saying here, we're saying that we want to make sure that we don't include the value negative 4 and that we only include things that are greater than or equal to 5 thirds. So we can give negative 4 an open circle. And what I'm seeing in this picture is if I just say x has to be greater than or equal to 5 thirds, there's no reason for me to also say that x can't be negative 4 because that's already true. If your x is greater than or equal to 5 thirds, then it is definitely not going to be negative 4. So just this is great. Again, throw in set notation if you would like to. If you want to use intervals, we're starting at 5 thirds and we're going to infinity. Okay, so if you get some combination of square roots and fractions, you're just going to have to think through carefully and make sure that you identify any values that will give you a problem with either one of the two. And you do want to try and simplify your statement if possible. It's not always possible to write it in any simpler way, but uh, in this example, we definitely could. All right, thanks for watching.